All right, I guess we can get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so today we're going to talk about chapter 11 of the data science and education for our book. It is about exploring relationships using social network analysis with social media data. That's Voxel number five. Uh, so I'm Carlo and I'll be talking about it today. Um, so if I can make this slide go to the next. So the learning objectives for this walkthrough is four things. So first is we'll examine uh, some examples of networks or graphs. Um, and then second is why do we care about uh, networks? So ex let's explain why we care about it. Uh, the third uh, point is to understand uh, some key terminology, structures, concepts about graphs. And then the last thing would be uh, to familiarize ourselves with different representations of a network. And then we'll have a demo afterwards. Um, Again, uh, so throughout this, I'm not again. So throughout this uh, walkthrough, if you have any questions, uh, please do feel free to interrupt me at any point in time. Cool. Um, so first, what are some examples of networks or graphs? Uh, I did not go away from our Tidy Tuesday Twitter community, and I just took some uh, network submissions. So this is a network. Uh, about common slave routes, basically connecting um, source and destination. So that is what this graph is trying to show. Um, another example of a network is a co-occurrence. Uh, for this particular submission, it, look, it looked at uh, voting records of UN, voting records of Europe countries uh, with the rest of the UN. And every time they vote together, uh, that measures like the link. And then this graph basically visualizes certain um, groups within Europe that are voting more often than others. Another one is Simpsons guest guesting. So you can go beyond like serious stuff uh, with network analysis. You can do like fun stuff like uh, guesting on Simpsons, uh, co-occurrences of ingredients in a cocktail, uh, and then the last thing is you can just like make art out of a network. So this is a submission by Cedric Scherer, uh, I think last year, if I'm not mistaken. So those are, those are like some example of networks and graphs. Um, so the point now is why should we care about network analysis? So the way I uh, think about network analysis is that um, when we do like regular analysis, we often look at um, trends, uh, but unlike individual elements of a given collection. But for network analysis, we often uh, try to look at the structure of those collections. Right? We try to uncover certain um, emergent properties that we normally will not see uh, if we only look at each of the records. So for example, earlier, if you look at voting records uh, of countries in Europe, we would not see, uh, let's say, UK often votes with Germany on a given proposition, right? if you only look at UK's own voting records. So how do we expand this, right? Um, so here are like three uh, things of how I bucket uh, these things. So we move from like occurrence to co-occurrence, which I've already talked about. Um, so for example, an analysis for occurrence would be, what is the most common item in a given grocery basket? So let's say it's chips. Uh, then we move to co-occurrence. So chips are most often bought with guacamole. And then we do like from, we move from like popularity to importance. So for example, we can say that Senator Alice and Senator Bob are the most prominent figures of donkey and elephant parties respectively. But like, it doesn't give us um, detail to which senator should we um, convince. Let's say we want to pass a bi bipartisan bill. It could be the case that Senator Charlie, uh, whenever uh, he co-sponsors the bill, that bill would pass more than Senator Alice or Bob. So it's not so much uh, about popularity, but importance. And then the last thing is about this movement from like state uh, to flow, state meaning the property of something is like fixed, but 
we move to like flow. Uh, I think the example will be better explaining what I'm trying to capture here. So for example, Grand Central Terminal receives 300,000 riderships at a given day. But if we do a network analysis type of approach there, we could uh, get information such as Grand Central has 200,000 riders coming from Manhattan, while 50,000 uh, riders are coming from Brooklyn or Queens, which gives us more information than the 300,000 ridership in a given day. Um, so hopefully I convince you on why we should care uh, about network analysis. Um, cool. Uh, the next slide is uh, just making some concepts uh, for network in just trying to tie that up with real world examples. I know that the reading uh, was a bit um, short on like concepts. So I'll, hopefully I'll try to augment that uh, on this walkthrough. Uh, the aim is not to uh, go through network analysis 101, but just like familiarize with like key terms. So let's begin with graph components. So here uh, we define a graph or a network as essentially like a representation of how things are connected. And for network analysis or for graphs, the things are normally called nodes or vertex, and then the connections are called the edges. So in this particular example um, of trade flow for given countries, each of the nodes here are countries, and then the lines are connections if country A and country B are trading with each other. So other thing, the other, the other thing to think about uh, about edges is that edges have this property called weights. So a weight is essentially like a measure of how strong that connection is. Uh, again, going back to this example, the weight of the connection here is how much uh, is country A uh, proportion of uh, trade is coming from country B. Um, so that is that for graphs, edges, vertex, and nodes. Um, if, you deep, if you go deeper on like graphs and network analysis, uh, you might see this notation, G parenthesis VE. It basically just says it's a graph with vertex V and edges E. So this is like added uh, snippet. Um, the other thing that I want to go through is this idea of centrality um, in network. So centrality is essentially like a concept that talks about how important is a vertex or a node is in the given network. Um, so for example, in this uh, real world application, um, this paper is about um, a transportation network in the UK, and they were trying to measure um, congestion in that network based on the location's centrality. So is this location, uh, are, are there a lot of roads that passes through this location? So if it's the case that there's a lot of roads connecting to that location, then we would expect that um, there will be like high congestion. It's been a while since I read this paper, so maybe that's wrong, but um, that's basically the general gist of it. Some examples that you might encounter if you hear centrality are like this tr three different variants, degree, betweenness, and closeness. So each of them tries to measure centrality in like different flavors. So degree is just a measure of how many nodes are connected to me. Betweenness is a measure that tries to uh, grasp how important am I in a network uh, for being a bridge? So if we go back to my example earlier, uh, Senator Charlie, uh, the one that, uh, the fake example that allows you to pass a bill if he co-sponsors it, has a high between us centrality because uh, he is well connected and acts as a bridge from like different parties. And then closeness uh, centrality aims to measure like the average distance of a given node across all the nodes. So the higher the closeness, the closer you are to all the nodes in the network. So 
So that is everything that I want to talk about centrality. Are there any questions so far or am I going too fast? Are we good? Cool, awesome. And then the last thing that I, I wanna talk about with concepts is clustering. So clustering is essentially like detecting communities in a given graph or a network. Uh, you can think of this as like analogous to k-means clustering or like hierarchical clustering when we're trying to like, here is this whole thing, let's try to break it apart into like pieces. So normally clustering is very useful for analyzing fragmentation or polarization in a given network. So for example, if we're in charge of um, stopping terrorist plans, uh, one thing that we can try to identify is that here is the network of all the terrorist players or terrorist cells, which um, message should we intercept so that um, they won't be able to like plan an attack. Um, so that's about fragmentation. The second one is it can help us understand the flow of information. So if we know how different groups are organized, we know how uh, information moves from like one cluster to another cluster. Uh, one thing that's of an example here is let's say you're interested in how information is flowing through like uh, parlor during um, the attack in January 6, you could apply network analysis on the members of those network. And then uh, the last bucket is about summarization. So instead of looking at members of the network, once you've clustered them into groups, you can then analyze the connections based on those groups. So an analog here is, let's say you are trying to reduce the dimensionality of your network by moving from like members to like uh, clusters. So yeah, this visualization here is a paper about um, clustering of TikTok duets. So um, basically we can see like really high partisanships on those duets. We're in um, a Republican duet with the Republican, a Democrat um, duet with the Democrat. Cool. So hopefully um, those intro parts uh, was clear. Uh, now we'll jump through like the demonstration. So how do we get started with network analysis in R? Um, so before we start, here are some packages that are useful when doing social network analysis or network analysis in general in R. Um, definitely tidyverse will be helpful for like manipulating tables. Um, and then the two specific packages for network analysis is tidygraphs and ggraphs. So tidygraphs is to, um, it has a lot of um, functions that allow you to convert from like a data frame to like a graph object. And then some of the calculations of key statistics uh, from the graph. And then ggraph is basically like your ggplot for graphs. Um, back in my day when I was in school, um, the package that we used a lot is igraph, but a lot of the functions in iGraph um, have an equivalent um, tidy way in tidy graphs. Um, so I'll try to not use it uh, for today because iGraph gave me headaches uh, when I was in school. Um, awesome. So we'll start by creating a graph of Twitter mentions. This is the one that's on uh, the book. Um, I'll be skipping. Uh, APIs in our tweet since Leila covered this quite well last week. Um, so I'm going to just start diving into um, network analysis proper. For this walkthrough, um, my toy example would be uh, trying to answer this question. Uh, who are the top mentionees and mentioners in the Tidy Tuesday community based on the sample data set that we have? And then um, what are some of the clicks in this network and who are its members? Um, and then before we start, just like an outline of the steps that we're gonna go through. 
So first is we're gonna load the table and then we'll do some data cleaning. Once we've cleaned the data, we'll convert the data frame into a graph. Um, and then once we have the graph, we'll generate some graph statistics. And then lastly, we'll visualize the graph. So um, in the book, uh, we already have a data set of tweets uh, that, that was collected. Um, so I just called that in the data edu package, store that as a PT tweets um, data frame. Um, similar to what Leila talked about last week, um, this data frame has a lot of uh, features or columns, um, but we're only interested for this uh, demonstration uh, on two columns. One is um, the screen name of the person who tweeted and the text that they tweet, because the text that they tweet contains uh, the people they mentioned. Um, so to do that, uh, we try to extract all the usernames that appear in the text. Uh, here, it's, cre it's creating a regex pattern that looks at a username. So at username. And this step right here uh, at the high level just reads the data frame, um, extracts all of the usernames that was contained in the tweet. And then once you've extracted that, we unnest the table. So you'll see like your username and each of the rows succeeding it would be the usernames that were mentioned. So for example, suppose Cesar uh, mentioned eldest AP, eldest AP web and index, index Argentina, then unless will separate uh, that list into two rows. So that is what it's doing over here. Um, wait, are there any questions so far or am I going too fast? I just wanna make sure. We're good. I guess we're good. Um, so uh, quick question. Yeah. As I'm now reading your title, these are these are two edges. Uh, in your in the in this uh, table that we have over over there, the sender and the receiver are two edges. Is that right? Um, two nodes. So two, no two nodes. Yeah. The edges is the connection between them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> So yeah, so the thing that we created is a edge list table. So an edge list table is one of the different representations of a graph. Uh, so an edge list basically lists out uh, for a given row, uh, node one, node two, node one, node two, which corresponds to like a connection exists between node one to node two. Um, so yeah, so dimensions data frame that we created is an edge list. Um, so a segue concept, uh, since we're talking about um, edge list and nodes. So a graph can uh, be either directed or undirected. So as the name suggests, directed means that X being connected to Y does not necessarily mean that Y is connected to X. Um, how does that translate? So the way I think about this is this cheeky example. We're in some relationships are directed, some are undirected. So if in a relationship feelings are requited, then that means it's undirected. X being in love with Y means that Y is also in love with X. But like in relationships or in its unrequited, then you get a directed graph. We're in X liking Y does not necessarily Y liking X. Um, the other thing um, that is key on directed graphs is that um, let's say X is connected to Y and Y is also connected to X but those connections need not be the same. Um, those connections can have different weights. 
So for example, uh, in the trade data that I showed earlier, let's say America imports $200 million worth of gold from, I don't know, let's say, I don't know which one produces gold, let's say Australia. Um, but Australia does not necessarily import 200 million worth of gold from the US. Those values could be different. So that means their weights are different. So here, a checkpoint would be, is our mention stable directed or undirected? Does anyone want to take a stab? Directed? It is directed, yeah. yes, because yeah. sender are directed. directed. Yeah, because yeah, uh, me mentioning someone does not mean that that person mentioned me. So it is directed. Thank you. Um, so going back to where we were. Um, so now that we have the mentions um, data frame, we're going to use this function called as TBL graph to convert that edge list into a graph. So G is an object uh, that is of class or type graph. Um, but notice if you print out the structure of that graph, uh, one thing that you might notice is that it looks a bit different. We're in, it's a list where you have a name and then it has values. So this is another representation of a graph called adjacency list. So whereas edge list gives you node one, node two, node one, node two, an adjacency list gives you node one in the list of all nodes that are connected to node one. So for example, um, this user DG Winfred um, is connected to said sharer right here in this adjacency list. And then David Mass is connected to Thomas P. Awesome, so that is an adjacency list. Um, so now one thing that you might be interested in is how do I calculate some statistics uh, on a graph? Uh, so we'll start with something that's basic. Um, from earlier, I was talking about centrality in one of the variance is degree centrality. So here I'm going to calculate uh, for a given node, how many people do I mention, which is the out degree centrality. It's the number of edges that goes out of me, right? the people that I mention. So from here, we'll know the users who mentions a lot of people. Um, do you guys have a guess? from this data set or from your experience in Tidy Tuesday, who are the top mentioners? If anyone can give a name or throw a name. Top of mind for me when I was doing this was either John the Geek or Thomas P or R4DS. Um, so it turns out um, that yeah, Thomas Mock not Thomas P is the one that has highest um, out degree, which I guess makes sense because he organizes um, Tidy Tuesday. Um, next thing that we can do is the opposite. Who are the top mentionees? Meaning people at you or mention you a lot. So instead of out, I use in. Um, and this centrality degree is coming from tidy graph. Um, so here, um, the top mentionees are the R4DS community. I think it's when Thomas Mock at R4DS community to know that the data is out, uh, which makes sense. Um, I guess some notes on tidy graph. This was a little difficult for me when I first um, and the played around with it. Um, this activate um, is special on tidy graph. Basically, you're allowed to use um, dplyr verbs on a graph object, but every time you do a dplyr object 
uh, deploy our function on the graph object. You either apply it on the nodes part of the data set or the edges part of the data set. So since centrality degree is a statistic on nodes, it gets applied to nodes. And once I want to pull that information from the graph object, I can use activate nodes and then do an as table to pull that information. And then now from here, it's just a data frame. Cool. Um, what's the next thing that I'm gonna do? Okay, so we're visualizing the graph. So in this case, um, we're gonna use the ggGraph package, which is the ggplot for graphs. Um, it takes a graph um, as the first parameter, in this case, g. And then the second parameter is layout. So there are different layouts available, but basically you can think of layout as how would my nodes in this visualization going to be arranged. So most of the layouts uh, out there are based on optimizing the distances of the nodes based on how strongly they are connected on other nodes. So think of it as, let's say you have 100 nodes and then each of those nodes have spring between them. Those algorithms just try to like um, minimize the overall force on the nodes on those springs. But just an interesting point, I guess. Um, so once you use ggGraph on the graph and the layout, you then specify that you want to show the nodes and then you want to specify the edges. So you can graph this without the node. You can also graph this without the edges. Uh, but adding those two just tells ggGraph, I want to see both. And then similar to ggplot, you're allowed to map a feature uh, into an aesthetic. Uh, in this case, I'm not mapping anything to node, that's why it's all black. And then for geom edge link, I'm not mapping any aesthetic, that's why they all get the same alpha value, which is the tr transparency of the links. And then theme graph is similar to theme in ggplot. Um, cool. Um, let's try to spice this, this up a bit. Um, so in this graph, what I'm after is I want to visualize the in degree centrality uh, of the users. I also want to remove users that are not mentioned that often. So I'm gonna filter those users whose degree uh, is above five. So only those users who are mentioned more than five times. And I want to map out the statistic, the degree centrality into the size of the node and the color of the node. So to do that, um, I'm just gonna use, sorry. To do that, I would first filter, um, sorry, again, let me backtrack. First, I would calculate the degree centrality of each of the nodes using centrality degree. And then since I care about mentions, I would use in because those are mentions. If you are mentioning someone, then that's out. And then I want to be able to filter on the value of degree, but in order for um, tidygraph to know which de where degree is coming from, I have to activate the nodes part of that data structure. So activate nodes. So from here on out, I'm able to do like deploy our verbs on the nodes um, component of the graph. And then after that, I'm just passing it to ggGraph um, and then to visualize the size and color, I'm using the aesthetic value and I want the size to be degree and the color to be degree. So in this case, you get this graph uh, in this user right here has the highest in degree centrality because uh, it has the biggest circle in 
the light as blue. Um, how are we on time? Because I'm almost done. I think I'm blazing through this. Um, so we'll have time for questions then, I guess. So here is a bonus um, called finding clicks on our Tai Tuesday network. So here uh, we're not insinuating uh, clicks as in the mean girl way of clicks. So for graphs, clicks actually has a very precise meaning. It basically just says from my whole graph, uh, can I find a section of it wherein all the members of that graph is connected? So for example, you have 10 users. Out of those 10 users, you have three users that are connected to each other. Then those three users are a click within that whole graph. Um, so for this analysis, as we mentioned earlier, this graph is directed but doing a click analysis turns the graph into undirected, which is like a note. Uh, I'm going to use functions from iGraph, which is basically the lower level um, graph package that tidy graph sits on. And I'm going to use this function is called click num. Click num basically just gives me what is the size of the biggest click it can find in the graph. And the function clicks basically gives me from this graph, find all of the clicks whose size is this. So in this case, I'm finding all clicks whose size is the biggest click size. Um, this is just like plotting it. Um, but here's the graph of some of those clicks. So there are 14 clicks on this data set whose size is five. Um, so meaning all those five users have mentioned each other or received mention from one another. Uh, so yeah, in this case, we have uh, Gio Karamani's R for DS community, Thomas Ma, D Rob, and we are for ladies, ladies having mentioned or received mention from each other. And then you have another clicks with John the Geek, Thomas Mock, Riva Kiroga, Kirisi, Giants Collide. And then you have John the Geek again with Kupri Nasha, Thomas Mock, Riva Kiroga, and Kirisi. Um, yeah, from here, we can see Thomas Mock is like everywhere in, in, in this uh, data set um, because uh, he mentions a lot of people every time he um, publishes the data. So yeah, that's uh, what I have for this walkthrough. Um, I may have gone through this really quickly. Um, so I'm happy to like discuss sections uh, wherein it needs clarification or you need help with something. That was great. I'm just curious, do you have, do you ever use network analysis like um, at your work or in any other capacity? Because for me, I, I think network analysis is super interesting, but we like have never done it like uh, outside of like side projects um, at work. Yeah, so I have not used it for work, um, but I had a class in college when I use it. And then um, I had some, what do you call this? Like a like research work on campus wherein we use um, like network analysis to apply it on like text data. Uh, let's see if I can explain it properly. Um, so we had this problem uh, wherein we want to identify text reuse uh, of transcripts. So for example, you have a local channel called ADC, and then they have a section about, um, let's see, 
let's say they caught an alligator in that city. Uh, and then you have another cable news network on the same locality using the same transcript, but being presented by a different person. So the challenge there is that our data set is um, textual transcripts that has a lot of um, typos, um, a lot of missing words, etc. So it's really hard to just do string matching uh, quite nicely. Um, and it gets expensive the higher the deformities of that transcript. So what uh, we did was we have a transcript of words, we break it apart, and then each of those words or engrams are essentially like members of the network. And then we try to find co-occurrences of those words from other transcripts. And then you basically build this graph. Once you have the graph of like co-occurrences of, of those engrams or words, you then try to do some clustering on it. Um, and then that's where you see like oh, this n-grams are co-occurring more often than, than not. And then that's basically a way to use or to identify which of those transcripts um, are reused. Um, yeah, it's been a while, it's been three years since I, I did this. So I'm probably not explaining it quite well, but that was a fun project using network analysis. That's super cool, thank you. I think uh, to Isabella's point about using this in like education, the only thing that came to mind for me was students taking courses together. If there is, that's the only thing that I think that would come to mind if, you know, some students are taking courses like, you know, I take math and I take English at the same time, but I don't know how much of that could be an artifact of their major, but I think that's an avenue otherwise i think it's cool stuff but again i don't know like presenting this to other people and like talking to like decision leaders if they'd be like yeah that seems kind of neat but what can i really discern from it i think would be the difficult part mm -hmm. i've used it in my work once um sorry my, i apologize my camera's off but i have an unstable internet so it helps when i turn it off um and the one project was with faculty data, not student data. And what we looked at was actually for the data science um, program, I mean, not program, it's not a department in our university. So it's based on like members of other departments who work in the data, who teach data science. And so they wanted to see how interdisciplinary the faculty members were and if they're collaborating with one another. So the network map was like, um, looking at the faculty members affiliated with data science program and then seeing who they're collaborating with based on the grants that they um, have gotten. So we looked at like our grant, like, um, I guess, administration program or whatever and looked at who's the PI and who are the co-PIs. And then, so each node was an uh, investigator or a researcher and then the, the weights for the edges were like the number of grants they did together. So kind of the network was just kind of like who's collaborating with other people and like how strong are those interdisciplinary kind of connections thing there. Um, but it didn't really work out because they wanted kind of like this, I think it was like a workflow issue because they wanted this kind of um, being fed all the time. And there was like a static data set that I was using. So it was like, this is the network at this particular point in time. And it wasn't something that they could go in and kind of see if it's changing throughout the year. Um, so yeah, it was just a kind of a one-off project, but that was one example that we did in education data. Yeah, on, onto that, one thing that's also tangential with education, with like investigators, you'll see a lot of this uh, around um, people that are doing co-citation. So let's say, I wrote a paper, who did I cite? And then you can build a network off of that. Um, so you'll see a lot of those on research. Could this be used for like um, how funds are used within a um, school district or a state or something 
you know, specific about education um, to see like if funds are being allocated correctly or wisely. Um, Cause I, I like, I know that banks use graph networks um, and for like fraud detection and they use machine learning stuff within a network, um, which is way beyond <laughs> what I've even thought about here. But like, yeah, I'm just curious if there's any sort of like how, how a, um, you know, kind of like what uh, Alyssa was talking about with just like people connections, but if there's like financial connections um, and allocation. Yeah, I'm not familiar with any use case for like education, but yeah, that just reminds me of um, with regards to like finances, there's a lot of research on like contributions. So like PACs to like politicians, maybe that could, that same methodology could apply to like funding with like education uh, as you're saying it for like districts and like state and federal funding, that sort of thing. So I, I have another question for the, those of you who have done uh, network analysis. Was it difficult to locate and create the, the edge list and you know, this database? I know you walked through it really nicely from the chapter, but you know, they were all kind of, it was all there, nice, uh, nice uh, case study there. Um, so how difficult is it to create a, a network, you know, a database from the wild. I, I can probably start with something. So I, I guess it depends on um, the question that you're trying to answer. So let's say, um, okay. So let's say we have, I'm going back to my transcript example. I have uh, records of all of the office's uh, script. And I have like Dwight, what he said, uh, Michael, what he said, etc. And what I'm interested in is who among the characters uh, often talk to each other. So in that case, your data cleaning would be looking at, um, again, I guess it's the same as um, dimensions. Um, but for conversations, usually you don't say good morning at Michael. So you won't get that. What, what you can do is like look at the successive um, records of scripts and then you can do like a lag. And then now you have Dwight, Michael, Michael, Dwight, et cetera. And then now you have like an edge list, right? Um, yeah, it, it depends. Um, so let's say you want to um, study students um, who are taking different courses. So you have like student course, student course, student course, but you want to relate students as opposed to student to a course. Um, this is, maybe I'm throwing a lot of terminologies here, but uh, one, Thing that you could use is that if an entity is mapped to another entity but it's of a different class so in this case student to a course that is essentially still an edge list right but it's a different type of graph called bipartite graph it's essentially mapping a different entity to another entity but you can convert it back to a unipartite graph, which is the things that we talk about. Um, there is a pre-built function that allows to do that, but usually that those calculations are really expensive. In, in, in that case, there'll be some sort of step where you define if um, Carlo took math and Carlo took chemistry and I don't know, Isabella took math and Isabella took physics, 
is Carla connected to Isabella? And then you can answer, they're connected if they share at least one class. So uh, those are the types of manipulations that you uh, have to do. Um, yeah, but I think at the end of the day, it's about like, here is my messy data. Here's my idealized edge list structure. Just do like a deep IR transformation as such. It's just steady, right? Just deep IR function verbs to get it there. <laughs> nice. Maybe other people have a faster way of doing it. Yeah, I'm looking at um, the questions um, on the chat. Um, on visualizing network graphs, if you don't want to use R or if you don't want to code, uh, some other programs that come to mind is like Cytoscape. Uh, you basically like upload a CSV of let's say an edge list and you can do like point and click approach for visualizing, analyzing graphs and there is another one that I'm forgetting. I haven't used Neo4j, um, but I think they are really graph heavy. Um, yeah, I, I cannot remember the name of the other one. I was scared uh, trying to do this. I, I, I've never done this in the R4DS universe doing a book club presentation. Um, Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for humoring me. Great, I learned yeah. a lot. <laughs> thanks. Awesome, thanks guys. Bye -bye. See you next week.